Hello everybody, welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study for First Baptist Church of Fruitvale, Texas. Um, my name is Matt Parker, if you don't know me, and I am filling in and helping out um, in these times. If you notice, we're not at the church. Um, we are at my office at my home in Martin's Mill, simply because of uh, the abundance of caution from the COVID. Uh, so we're doing online only, but uh, it's my joy and privilege to join you tonight. And we're going to talk about um, Acts chapter 10. Um, one of my, I guess, all-time favorite. I say that like at every story. I get it. But really, this is probably one of my favorite stories for a lot of reasons. A few of which we'll talk about as we go. Um, and partly is is because this is where the Spirit comes to the Gentiles. Um, it gives me hope. Uh, for being a Gentile, that the Holy Spirit can actually come and, and empower us like he did with the Jews in the first century. Um, but there's just a lot of, I think, what I would call grit and just normalcy um, in this chapter. And so what we're going to do is walk down through it. We may not actually get through chapter 10 tonight. It is a big chapter. There's a lot going on in the story. Um, and there's a lot I want to draw out of this story. And so I, if you notice on the welcome screen, um, I always say on there um, to, uh, hello, Miss Yolanda uh, Kittrell. I hope I said that right. Um, welcome. Uh, if you're out there and when you log on, go ahead and put your name, say hi to everybody in the comments so that we know you're watching. Um, if you notice in the welcome screen, I always say get your Bible, a pen, and a journal. Um, I want to encourage you to have something to write with and something to write on when we're doing these Bible studies. Um, even if you're watching them after the fact, um, you may miss something. You need to write it down, look it up later. You may learn something you didn't know that you want to remember. It may bring a thought to your mind, uh, uh, all kinds of things. And so let's just have a word of prayer and jump right in. Father, we do love you. We, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, just your goodness. You are so good to us. And, and we thank you for allowing us to have stories to study in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Uh, also, I want to thank you all for praying for me and for my family. Um, we uh, got a clean bill of health today, and we are um, good to go. And uh, and so feeling much better and uh, just doing the deal. So let's jump into Acts chapter 10. I'm glad you're here. Got several people online. Again, put your name in the comments. Say hi to each other. Uh, let's make this as much a fellowship as possible. And if we were sitting face to face... Um, I would encourage you to ask questions, stop the conversation if you have a question or get lost, and I do the same thing online. Um, if you've got a question, I'm watching over here on another screen for comments, and so if you've got a question or you want to uh, have me go back and look at something, pop it in the comments, I'll see that, and uh, we'll try to, to help you out with there. But let's jump into Acts chapter 10. We just got finished, if you remember. Um, this young lady named Dorcas Tabitha has been raised to life by Peter. He's been staying in Joppa. And uh, there's this little town called Caesarea nearby Joppa. And uh, not, too, not too far away. It's kind of in the same province, same region. And that's where we pick up chapter 10. Now, as I told you, there's a lot going on in chapter 10. Um, let's just go through it. Chapter 10, verse 1. There was a man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. And some of your Bibles may say the Italian Cohort. Um, let's talk about Caesarea for just a second. Um, this is not Caesarea Philippi, as you see in other places, but this is Caesarea Palestine. Um, it's a, a little bit of a different city. It's a port city, um, uh, and it's, it's just got a lot of commerce and things. It's a, it's a major city. And, and that's important because that tells us who Cornelius is. Now, Cornelius is the is significance of the Italian regiment. Within the city of Caesarea, there would have been a Roman magistrate. And there's a, there's a name for the Roman magistrate that I can't bring to mind. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. But he would have had a, I want to call it a bodyguard, you know, his, his regiment that, that protected him. Um, and they would have been um, from Italy, from Rome. That's why I, they were called the Italian Regiment. I mean, they were Romans. But what that also tell us, tells us is that they were Gentiles. These were not Jews. These were not believers in Yahweh. These were pagans, uh, for, for lack of a, better, of a better phrase. 
but as we so we that's who we're talking about and this name cornelius uh, i mean it is an italian name this guy is a roman and and for me that's an important part of the story because he's a gentile and i'm a gentile and most of you are probably gentiles that are seeing this and so this story is really for us when i do kind of how where did the church come from sort of a, a thing i've done it several times you know, we start with Adam and even we go down, we go to the Jewish, the, to the Jews, and then you go to the Gentiles, and Peter was, uh, you know, going to the, the, you have Peter with the Jews, and then Paul the Gentiles, and uh, and uh, things like that, or, you know, getting that messed up, but um, I get to this point in Acts chapter 10, and this is the place where the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit comes to Gentiles and it starts to branch and eventually gets down to you and me. So without Acts chapter 10, you and I aren't even studying the Bible. We don't have the Holy Spirit. We don't have the gospel without Acts chapter 10. It's a pivotal point for us. So it says, There was a man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Verse 2. He was a devout man. And he feared God along with his whole household and did many charitable deeds for the Jewish people and always prayed to God. That is an extremely important verse. Don't skip over that one. Because remember, this is a Gentile. So somewhere along the line, Cornelius, in observing the Jews and how that they worshipped Yahweh and how they worshipped God, um, he, they had something that appealed to him. And it says he was a devout man and he feared God. Now, I want to interject something here that might be something different than what you've heard before. In the American church, we do something that I frankly have always thought was a little bit strange. Um, we've been talking about discipleship and we've been talking about the importance of teaching and training and being trained up into the ways of the way, as they would call them, into the ways of Jesus. In the American church, we have centered for a long time everything that we do around the conversion. And everything centered on the conversion. Every, at the end of every service, it's centered on the conversion. Everything that we do is on the conversion. And then somewhere down the line, this really odd thing has happened in our church, is in just an American church. We've separated the conversion and the being a disciple and a follower of Jesus, which is really strange because that's not really what you see in the text in the New Testament. We see followers of Jesus, and even in the disciples themselves, I'll challenge you to go look this up. Look at the story when John and Peter ran to the empty tomb. And, and we see these guys walking with Jesus himself and acting like knuckleheads all the time. James and John, who's going to be the greatest in your kingdom? You know, and he's like, what? what? And so we have this stuff happening, but at, when they get to the tomb, John runs ahead. He was a lot younger. Uh, he, he's a, probably a young teenager. Runs ahead. They go in. And the Bible says that when they saw that Jesus was gone, it says, then they believed. And so there was a progression of their belief. And then we see after that, then, of course, Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, something really changed in these guys. They scattered like roaches at Calvary. Pentecost comes with the Spirit, and we have different guys. Well, what I would submit to you is, is that we've done something that I think has damaged sometimes our ability to have a good witness and to raise up disciples. Because here's the problem. We live for the conversion. But look what's happening in Acts chapter 10. Here's Cornelius, and then the Bible says his whole household was, was going to be able to be described this way. So here you have a Gentile who is a devout man and fears God. I would submit to you, he was already beginning the process of being a disciple. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Um, in the Iranian church, I think I said this on Sunday, um, that they make disciples so that they may be converted, which is a very biblical uh, process. We make converts and then hope and pray one day that people get discipled. And I think we've got it backwards. In this text, you've got a man who's already being discipled, as it were. He wasn't being discipled in the ways of Jesus, but he was being discipled in the ways of faith at this point in time. And the Jews were discipling him. And he saw something in God that was um, appealing to him. And we know it was a real deal. Because the Bible says he was devout. And then it says he did many charitable deeds for everybody in the city. It's not what it says. It says he did many charitable deeds for the Jews... 
and always pray to God. That's extremely important because at this time, the Jews and the Gentiles were not best friends. Um, and so the fact that he was doing um, these deeds for the Jews, he had an affection for them. They had something in common. They were sharing a belief system um, in this God that they, the Jews would call Yahweh. And, uh, and then it says he always prayed to God. That fascinates me because here's this guy who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, doesn't know really who Jesus is. I mean, I'm sure he's, he's heard of him. Everybody kind of, Jesus was famous. They knew about Jesus, but it didn't appear that he was a follower of Jesus. And we kind of see that later in the, in the deal, but he was following the Jewish way and he was praying to God. I, I think of, of Cornelius as a lot of people that I've come across in my ministry. They're looking for something but they want it to be real. So let's keep reading. Verse 3, if you're reading along with me. About three in the afternoon, he distinctly saw in a vision an angel of God who came in and said to him, Cornelius. All right, now how many of us, now we like to think of ourselves as great Christians, but how many of us, even as followers of Jesus, we know all this stuff, we read this book, an angel comes in and was like, hey, Matt, I need to talk with you. I, it would freak me out. And so, but it says he prayed to God. He was a devout man. And apparently that didn't bother him. Let's keep reading. Verse four, staring at him in awe, he said, what is it, Lord? Capital L, you'll notice there. He knew where this was coming from. He knew what was happening because he was a devout man and he always prayed to God. He was in tune with God uh, by an act of discipline. Um, we're going to see a little bit later. I'm going to say this now so I don't forget to say it. What you're going to see when we see Peter in a little bit, in the, in the other part of this story, both of these men, when they were contacted by God and had a supernatural revelation from God, both of them were just going about their daily business of what I would call spiritual disciplines. Cornelius always prayed to God. He was always doing good deeds, even though he hadn't heard the gospel yet and didn't have this Holy Spirit. Later in the story, we're going to see Peter. It says he went up on the roof to pray. He was just doing the spiritual discipline thing, and God met them there. So when people ask me, why do you think it's important to read the Bible, study the Bible, pray, and sing, and go to church, and meet? Why is that important? Because those are the disciplines when we're doing them a lot of the times in which the Holy Spirit, God himself, will come and meet with us when we're just doing the deal every day, getting it to be a part of who we are, so that when something miraculous or something powerful happens, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal. He said he was staring in awe. But, I mean, we're not freaked out by it. We know what to do about it, which is respond. Let's keep reading. The angel told him, again, we're in the last part of verse 4, your prayers and your acts of charity have ascended as a memorial offering before God. Now, I know this is going to take me forever. We're going to take two or three weeks to get through Acts chapter 10. Here's a guy who is not yet converted as we would think of conversion, okay? I'm going to make that clear. He's not converted as we would consider conversion, all right, in the American church. He probably never walked an aisle, never, you know, said the prayer, did anything like that. He was a devout man who is doing good deeds out of an abundance of love for God. But then it says, your prayers have ascended as a, as a uh, memorial offering before God. God was receiving what he was doing. In verse 5, Now send men to Joppa and call for Simon, who is also named Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. Now I highlighted this in my Bible. And you're like, why would you highlight that part in your Bible? It's really simple. I love the detail with which God is doing what he's doing in this text. Because if you look and go back to chapter 9, okay? Uh, Peter stayed for some time in Joppa with Simon, a leather tanner. And now over here we see in verse 6, he is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. Now, Simon was a common name. And, and, and this is God saying, listen, I want you to go find this guy, Simon Peter. Remember this guy, Peter. He's staying, not not Simon the tanner who lives downtown, not, not, the, not the guy that, that, that tans downtown. Simon the tanner out by the sea. They knew exactly where to go. So when they got to Joppa, they 
could be like, all right, we need to find, and we're looking for Simon the Tanner. Oh, yeah, he's downtown. No, 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 not that guy. I want Simon the Tanner over by the sea. That's where we need to go. Very detailed, very particular, fascinates me. Love that part of the story. So, verse 7, when the angel who spoke to him had gone, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, who was one of, the, of those who attended him. After explaining everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now, Cornelius has a vision. Angel comes to him and says, go get Peter. He's with Simon the Tanner out by the sea. Cornelius says, fine, let's do it. It's full send. So here we go. At the same time, we see Peter, verse 9. What's my time? All right, we're good. The next day, as they were traveling and nearing the city, Peter went up to pray on the roof about noon. So about noon the next day, that tells you about how far away they were. These men are traveling from Cornelius over here from Caesarea. Peter goes up on his roof to pray. Now remember, he's just doing what he does. Okay? And you'll learn in this passage, if you didn't really already know it, this is post-resurrection. This is first century church. Jesus has ascended. Peter is one of the pillars of the church followers of Jesus, and he's still performing his Jewish duties, rituals, and lifestyle, which I find fascinating. That's a whole different day. Okay. Verse 10. He became hungry and wanted to eat, but while they were preparing something, he fell into a trance. I'm not going to get into that. I'd love to have that talk sometime. Verse 11. He saw heaven opened and an object that resembled a large sheet coming down, being lowered by its four corners to the earth. And in it were all the four-footed animals and reptiles of the earth and the birds of the sky. And a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. So inside of this sheet are all of the things that he, as a good Jewish boy, could not eat. I always like to say, and I know it's just make. I don't want to make light of the scriptures, but this is the bacon sheet. This is the sheet where he's like, this is all the stuff he's not allowed to eat. And the spirit says to him, get up and eat. This is not about eating. But he says in verse 14, no, Lord, Peter said, for I have never eaten anything impure and ritually unclean. I'm a good Jewish boy. Remember what Paul used to say? If anybody wants to brag about being a Jew, I'm the better Jew. Well, Peter's kind of saying the same thing here. Verse 15. Again, a second time the voice said to him, What God has made clean, do not call impure. This happened three times, and suddenly the object was taken up into heaven. So Peter's praying. Peter gets hungry. They're making him a snack. And he goes into a trance. And God says in this thing, If I made it, if I made it, don't call it impure. If I made it clean, if God has made clean, what God has made clean, do not call impure. Now, we like to think about our Bible characters that they always knew everything, that they just got it. Well, you know from studying the Gospels that they didn't because those dudes were some knuckleheads, right? And, and Jesus, would you could almost see his face going, oh, really, guys? How do I explain this to you again? Okay, they were a bit dense. Um, and that's okay. It gives me hope because I'm a bit dense myself. And so he says this happened, but then look at verse 17. While Peter was deeply perplexed about what the vision he had seen might mean, right away, knock, 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 the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions to Simon's house, stood at the gate. Peter himself, this guy's, you know, healing people, raising people up. I mean, this was the cat, okay? was greatly perplexed. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on here. And he was, you know, he was thinking about it. What in the world was that? Was it a sheet? All this unclean? There were snakes in there? There was a pig? Pumbaa's in there? I mean, you know, you can just see his mind working. What in the world is all this mean? While he's thinking about what this means, the guys show up. Then they read. Uh, verse 18. They called out asking if Simon, who was also named Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was thinking about the vision, the Spirit told him, Three men are here looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them with no doubts at all because I have sent them. Now, why do you think that the Spirit... Well, let me back up. First of all, the Spirit told him. Now, I've said this. I've said this the first... I think the first message I, I preached here. Um... I want to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit like these guys did. 
that when I'm in a quandary and I'm wondering about things and I want to know where do I go? Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go here? Do we do that? That the Spirit will tell us. That the Spirit will tell me. And I look in this text and I can see that it happens. There's promise for me because Peter was a knucklehead and he shot his mouth off. And we see even later on where Paul has to confront him for being a bigot. And, uh, and so I love Peter, but Peter's thinking about these things and the Spirit spoke to him. But then the Spirit says, I want you to go with these cats and I don't want you to have any doubts. Why do you think he would have doubts? Remember, he's a good Jewish boy. I've never eaten anything unclean, Lord. I can't do that. I'm a good Jewish boy. He's going to open the door and find these three Roman Gentile cats. Okay, they just didn't mix. Let me tell you a story. I had a, I had a customer one time who was a devout Jew, great guy. Um, he would not shake our hands when we got there because we were Gentiles. He didn't dislike us. He just didn't, he just didn't do that. There was two refrigerators in the office. We didn't get to drink out of the kosher one, and he didn't drink out of the Gentile one. Okay? It's, and that's now. You think about back then, there was a separation between Jew and Gentile. So when Peter sees these guys, he's going to be like, whoa, these are Gentiles. The Spirit already told him, don't have any doubts. You go with them. You just, just go downstairs and go with them. Now, we see the Spirit doing this all the time. All the time. Hey, Abraham, get up and go to a country I'll show you. What country? Didn't tell you. So I said, get up and go to some place that I'll show you. Okay? So here in a minute, we're fixing to get off here. And we'll, we'll finish the rest of it up a little bit later. Verse 21 says, Then Peter went down to the men and said, Here I am, the one you're looking for. What's the reason you're here? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, yet again we're seeing that, who has a good reputation with the whole Jewish nation, was divinely directed by a holy angel to call you to his house and to hear a message from you. Peter then invited them in and gave them lodging. I'll stop right there for tonight. But here's the thing. A couple things in that last bit of passage I want you to see. Cornelius was a Gentile. These guys are saying he's a holy guy. He's got a good reputation amongst the Jews, even though he's a Gentile. That tells Peter something. In other words, it's almost like them saying, you can trust this guy. This guy can be, uh, he's not just you know some crazy cat. People know him. He's got a good reputation. And, and, he's, and he's doing well. And then he says, he was directed by a holy angel. You know Peter's, he was directed by a holy angel. Wait a minute, he's not a Jew. Now, at this point in time, all the they'd seen that sort of thing in the Jewish community. That wasn't crazy. Holy angel. Oh yeah, great. Spirit's telling us stuff all the time. But this dude's a Gentile. And a holy angel talked to him. And the Spirit told me to go with them. Peter knew something was up. Peter knew something was going down. And then he said, uh, the next day, I'm in verse 23. The next day he got up and set out with them and some of the brothers from Joppa went with him. I don't blame him for taking the brothers from Joppa. All right? I Yes, trust the Lord, but take your brothers from Joppa with you too, just in case, right? And then it says in verse 24, The following day he entered Caesarea, and now Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and his close friends. And when Peter entered, Cornelius met him, fell at his feet, and worshipped him. I said I was going to stop. Okay, I'll give myself two minutes. All right. But Peter lifted him up and said, Stand up. I myself am also a man. Cornelius had this spirit of anticipation. He knew God had visited him. And he said, Go get Peter. Peter's there. He said, Go get Peter. Peter's going to tell you something. And, and you know in his spirit, he's like, I can't wait. I know it's going to be great. He got all of his friends together. He got all of his family together. I don't know what Peter's going to say, but God told me to go get this guy over in Joppa. And we found him over at the Tanner's house, over by the sea. Not the one downtown, but the over by the sea. And he's here. Everybody's gathered. Oh my goodness. I worshiped God. This guy is sent from God. He believed that Peter was sent from God. And he starts worshiping him. But I love Peter's response. And he, said, he tells him, you get up. I'm just a guy. I love that passage in Acts chapter 10 because the apostle Peter 
upon whom he says, I build the rock. You know, he says, Peter, your name is, is, is Petros. And upon this, his confession, I will build the kingdom. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. This same guy healing people. He said, I'm just a guy. That gives hope to me and you because we're just folks too. The same response that people, the angels had, you see them in, in scripture, where they would show up and people would fall down to worship them and they're like, no, 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 get up. I'm just a servant. And they're angels. How much more, Peter? I'm just a guy. And so uh, we'll, we'll pick up it there next week. I, I, you know, about 30 minutes. We've been on about 30 minutes. I don't want to go much longer than that. We'll pick up there when Peter gets to Cornelius' house because this is where the fun stuff starts. So it's already been crazy. It's already been upside down. Peter's like, I had this vision. These dudes are at the door. The spirit said, go. I went. All these people, and you're going to see in the next verse, he comes in and there's just this massive group of people. And I love it because when the guys came to the house over at Simon's, they said, Cornelius said to come get you he, that you have a message for him. I don't remember Peter studying. I, Peter, Peter knew. Peter knew what his message was, and he's gonna. we're going to see what his message was next time. Read ahead. Feel free to do so. Ask any questions you've got. I'm so glad you joined us tonight as we just open up the story of Cornelius, one of the greatest stories in all of the New Testament, because if you're a Gentile and you're watching this, you can trace your roots right here to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 when the Spirit fell, and he received the Spirit. Um, I can't wait to get, I can't wait to the part of the story we talk about how the church the the church responded. Oh, it's one of my favorite stories. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Uh, we'll be back online again on Sunday, as far as I know. Please watch Facebook um, for any announcements from the church and the leadership team about any changes. Um, but as my understanding as of right now, we'll be back online this Sunday. And again, please watch for Facebook. Um, and, uh, and keep in touch with your leadership team there to make sure um, if there's any updates or anything like that. Thanks for joining us online. Again, uh, I hope that we wet your whistle a little bit for the rest of this study um, in Acts chapter 10. Next time, tune in, same bat time, same bat channel, as we talk about how Cornelius uh, responds and his family. Let's have a word of prayer and be dismissed. Tonight, Father, we love you. Thank you for Cornelius. Thank you for a devout man of God that was doing good deeds and following you and searching for you before he ever even really knew you. And I thank you that you gave him the Spirit of God. And I pray that you would give us your Spirit. Fill us with your Spirit, God, that we can hear you like Peter did, that we can understand when you talk to us like Cornelius did, and then that we can then have the power to obey. I thank you for this word that you've given us. Thank you for these people that are online with us tonight listening and those that will watch it later when they can get to it. Father, we love you. We thank you and we praise you for all that you do and all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us again tonight. We'll see you on Sunday at First Baptist Church, Fruitvale, Texas. Uh, Y'all have a great week. And again, bring your Bible, something to write with, something to write on. And don't forget to put your questions and check in in the comments, even if you're watching this after the fact. We'll see you guys later. Good night.